big volume coming in, big volume coming in, right? But the problem with that is, of course, you're just doing what commercials do. You're not doing anything that's particularly safe by recognizing those big volumes. Of course, that's what fat tails are all about. We know that fat tails aren't, aren't a trade. It's a warning sign. It's not going to be a trade that you say, well, there's a fat tail. I'm going to buy it or sell it. I'm going to now recognize that there is a fat tail because each of these big volumes may well be a fat tail trade. Instead, what's the volume I'm interested in, guys? What's the volume I'm actually interested in now that you've started to see the process? The volume I'm actually interested in is this volume here, the buyers. I'm interested in finding the buyers coming in because when I find buyers coming in here, I now have a trade here, don't I? Until I find those buyers there, it's very, very unlikely that I'm going to have a trade at the bottom edge. Does anybody remember that? Stuart remembers it. When I have buyers there, I am now going to be able to think about the probability of a bottom edge opportunity to deal. Because until those guys show up, what have we got? We haven't got buyers, we've got supply, haven't we? Supply, 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 supply. So if I take you on a small journey in gold, perhaps you could help me with this journey. Perhaps we can see how the trade evolves. Perhaps we might be able to recognize when the bottom edge might be showing up sometime soon. So let's go on a journey on gold. You may be saying there's nothing on the chart. There is. It's just not visible yet. So let's go on a journey. Let's see if we can start to put the pieces together. Oh, interesting. Where's the buyers above, guys? So we could lean against it. Of course we could lean against it if it was a if there was a reason to be into that trade. But obviously that's still supply coming in. We've got to accept that that is still supply. So yes, we can lean against it. But we're already aware that that is a high risk trade right there to buy into just now because we don't know that there's any buyers above but we know there's a lot of sellers above we know there's sellers below if there's sellers below what's the trade selling above right it's the opposite if you've got sellers there that means that the seller that came in at this price is now seeing those sellers at lower prices and I'll trade on that short side. So if I buy above here, I've got a very, very, very small space of opportunity to make some money here, guys. So that's dangerous. And there's a sell still coming in. Beautiful. Okay. So the sellers were right. So we don't we don't get a trade on. We know that's not going to be a buy trade. Ah, sellers. Okay, so it could be the start of a commercial buy couldn't it the commercial buy if we if it was the start of a commercial buy we'd expect to go above here but there's still sellers below there's still sellers below because there's still sellers below that means that there is still likely to be sellers coming in from that area there because well they can see those sellers just the same way as you can see those sellers there's sellers below so at the moment, you've got to be very, very cautious about trying to buy into this phase, right? Oh, shit, the price kept selling. Isn't that a surprise? The price kept selling, but now what you're seeing is the volume is building very substantial. I know that because I trade gold, <clears throat> and you should know because you trade gold, that um, 300 in a block, uh, a block imbalance of 300 is probably the end of the move. Because 300 is too big a number. It's basically, oh, everybody is now short. You don't see 300 very often on gold, on these block prints. You see 100s, you see 200s. If you see 300, that's everybody's on board, right? But that's not what we're trying to show you here. So I know that that's probably the bottom. But it's not what I'm trying to show you. 
So I'm already thinking that that's it. The, tr the time is right now for the buy trade to come into this gold block trade at the bottom. So what happens? Well, the price stalls. And then we start seeing buying coming in. Ah, buying coming in. So what are we now thinking? Okay, we've now seen a big enough block for the commercials to really stop the market in its tracks. So now what I'm thinking is that this price is now going to be building something, perhaps. I'm taking the line out here so that we can see it. The price is now going to be a bottom edge. We now have a bottom edge buy to work against, haven't we? We can start thinking about the high probability that an exhaustion print at the lows or a block print at the lows with smaller numbers could well be the end of the down move. Still more volume. Okay, so selling still coming in, but we've got the buyer now, so that's okay. Selling, so we're waiting now to be able to lean against those. We're seeing low volumes. So we're waiting for a lean against one of these ideas. Selling still coming in. Still selling. Doesn't make any difference. We've still got buyers at higher prices, guys. Still selling. Still selling. Selling. Still got the buyer at higher prices. So I'm now able to lean against these. The numbers are good. I like the numbers. Selling. Boom. There's your trade. There's your trade. Now, what you're now going to be doing is, now that you've found your trade, because now you've seen sellers getting trapped, now the trade is going to be working this area. So this area here, this area here now becomes your, <clears throat> your buy zone. Because you've now trapped a seller, you've got buyers above you, you've now got a bottom, you've now got an actual bottom edge. So you can now work into that trap position. So obviously your job now is to try and find a way into that deal. You know that's going to be a cap price, right? So you know that's going to be where it's going to stop. At least initially you would imagine there's going to be sellers coming back in against that to try and keep the price in this area. And you see the price coming up into that buyer at the top edge. You know it's going to sell off them that price, probably. And then another buyer appears. Exactly the same price, look. Exactly the same price. You couldn't make it up, could you? So that's now exactly what you're thinking. So you're thinking that that's going to trap the buyers, push the price to a half back maybe, and buy back in, or possibly a bottom edge. What happens next? Well, let's see what happens next. The price rejects off those buyers. Some sellers come in. Pretty heavy sellers. I'd hate to see those sellers getting trapped, would you not? Pretty heavy sellers coming in, trying to take the market offered. I'd hate to those be those sellers if they got trapped. No sellers did get trapped. Big sellers trapped on the other side. Buyers above you. Boom, straight into big profits. And then obviously the takeaway from that trade was absolutely sensational, wasn't it? Look at that. So the seller at the bottom, you got your opportunity to buy against it. You expected to see a buyer here. You got a buyer there. You didn't expect to see the seller there. That means what? If you see a seller there, what would that suggest to you? Would that not suggest to you commercials crossing the spread to get into the long position at higher prices? Is that not what that buyer at that price would suggest to you because it's at a higher price? There's some sort of a, if that was, if there wasn't a buyer here, that price would have went straight down, wouldn't it? So when you see that seller coming in there, that's a massive sell side imbalance. Well, if there wasn't buyers, that massive sell side imbalance 
should have done what happened here. It should have been a very large red candle like this away from it. So when that sell side imbalance came in and what we got instead was a green candle, you're now thinking to yourself, wait a second, those commercials are those commercials are crossing at the half back trade. This mark, this market's going to get marked up pretty soon. And sure enough, when the buyers came in at the half back trade here, they took the market bid straight away and they pushed the price straight through to the top edges. Again, simple little simple processes, you see it? And we've got a similar situation setting up here. Sellers, uh, buyers at the top, and obviously the price just taking profits. We still don't have sellers anywhere down at the bottom edge. Buyers come back in, buyers come back in, buyers come back in, buyers come back in. You can see the volume is starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger, so you're starting to get worried that this is going to be the end of the move higher. Hundreds, 190s, 150s, and then suddenly a big 210. That's probably getting a bit stretched now. There's a lot of imbalances in here. And then sellers come in here. So obviously what we're looking for is we're looking at that and saying, okay, what happens if the buyers come in at lower prices and the price doesn't sprint? There's your sell trade, right? Just exactly the same as when the sellers came in here and the price didn't sprint south. And that was your buy trade. At the top edge, if we start seeing buyers come in at lower prices in this area and they don't make the market move higher, you know that's the commercials now crossing the spread on gold to get the market short away from that area. Because at the moment, your trade would be short off of that 210, right? That's where your short trade would be. But that's obviously dangerous because you haven't seen that sell yet. So that's more of a commercial lean. And that's a dangerous trade. When you see the sell, your trade now would be to try and sell the top edge. But obviously now what you're looking at is that sell didn't cap the price. That sell actually came in and pushed. What I'd like to see now is a buyer at lower prices that doesn't move the price. And that's very, very strong evidence that the price will roll, roll back off of this area and then sell back off again. So that's something you're now watching for, right? That's something you're now going to be watching to see if it shows up. I'll leave the chart up so that if anybody wants to watch it, you can do so.